Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is sketching graphs for certain situations. So we're going to sketch uh, continuous graphs and discrete bat graphs. And don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathLog.com. Just make sure you go up to the top and click uh, the link that says Integrated Math 1. There's several links up there. Alright, so a continuous graph is, is drawn without any interruptions, usually with lines or curves or a connection of the two. Discrete graph is not continuous and is made up of distinct unconnected points. Okay, so we'll have examples of both of those. Your domain is your input of a situation and it represents the x-axis on a graph. Your range is the output and represents the y-axis. So for example, right here, when we're graphing stuff right here, this is our x-axis and so this is our input, this is our domain. A lot of times this is represented as T for time or whatever. And then uh, this right here is your Y axis. It's your output. It's your range. So whatever, you know, I think we have um, a snowfall and amount of time, a bath filling with the amount of quartz. So if it was quartz, we'd have this as Q and this is T right here for time. Okay. You'll see several examples. So um, I should have done this in the in the first part one lesson, so I'll do it right here. So it's just a quick review of linear situations and proportional. Linear means that they're continuous straight lines. Lines means linear. And proportion means the line goes through the origin. So this one's linear, but since it doesn't go through the origin, it's not proportional. Okay, and then this one here is linear, and it is proportional as long as it goes through the origin right there. All right. Okay, also linear uh, equations have the following characteristics. Both x and y have an exponent of 1. Um, x and y are not multiplied together, but they're added or subtracted together. Uh, x and y um, uh, do not appear in denominators. They don't appear in exponents, and they don't appear in radicals. Okay, all right, so here's some examples. Tell whether these represent linear functions right here. Okay, this one is not because of this pr uh, property right here. They have to be an exponent of 1. Okay, this one is because they're exponents of 1. They're being added together. Don't let that point 3 fool you. It's just a number right there. It could be 3x. So that one is. This one is not because this says xy is x times y. They can't be multiplied together. They're added or subtracted. This one is not because x is in the exponent right there. Okay, so that's what that says right there. All right, so we're going to sketch a graph of each situation and tell whether the graph is continuous or discrete and then determine the domain and range. Okay, so here's one. A student has taken a test. There are 10 problems on the test. For every problem the student answers correctly, that student receives 10 points. Okay. Okay, so here we down, have down here, there's 10 problems on a test. So this is the number we get, can, <laughs> tongue twister, can get correct right here. And this is the number of points, okay? So for, if they got zero correct, they get zero points. So we'll put a, a dot right there. If they get one uh, question correct, they get 10 points. So over 1, up 10 right there. If they get two, they get 10 more, which is 20 points. 3, they get 30 points, and so on and so on, all the way up to 10, they get 10 points. Okay, now they're not being connected, they're just points. So this is not continuous, this guy is discrete, okay? It's a discrete graph. It just means it's non-continuous. That's all discrete means. Okay, the students can get anywhere from 0 to 10 questions correct, so this is our domain right here. Our domain are whole numbers. Whole numbers means there's no fractions. You can't get like 1.5 answers correct. You only get, you know, whole numbers correct. So their whole numbers from 0 to 20 is our domain. Okay, here's our range. Our range are the points right here, and they're not uh, uh, quite whole numbers right here. Our range is whole numbers that are multiples of 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, you know, they can only get a multiple of 10. So the range is whole numbers that are multiples of 10 from uh, 0 all the way up to 100 right there, okay? All right, let's try and unwind this big old word problem here. Bathtub is being filled with water. After 10 minutes, there are 75 quarts of water in the tub. Then someone accidentally pulls the plug while the water is still running, and the tub begins to empty. The tub loses 15 quarts in 5 minutes, and then someone put, uh, plugs the drain back up, and the tub fills five more minutes. After 15 minute bath, the person gets out and pulls the drain and it takes 11 minutes for the tub to drain. All right, let's break this down one at a time right here. Okay, so here I'm making a graph right here. This is my input. This is my domain, how much time there is. And this is in time, T. Okay, 
and then uh, this is our quartz so we called it Q for quartz so this is our output this is our range right here okay all right now we'll see where these numbers come in just a minute as we break down the problem right here we'll see this right here let's do this one at a time and I highlighted it right here after 10 minutes there's 75 quarts so the water's pouring in and after 10 minutes there's 75 quarts so over 10 up 75 right there okay and then the next one says um, uh, then somebody accidentally pulls the plug while the water is still running and the tub begins to empty the tub loses 15 quarts in five minutes so it's going to go down here uh, by 15 quarts so 75 minus 15 is 60 and we're just going to go over five so it's going to take us to uh, 15 minutes and down to 60 quarts of water okay and then someone plugs the drain and the tub fills up for five more minutes so the water still going at the same rate that this is but it's only going for five more minutes this was for 10 minutes so this is going to be for five minutes so for 10 minutes was 75 quarts so for five minutes we take half of 75 75 divided by 2 is 37 and a half quarts okay so it was down here at 60 so we're going to add 37 and a half quarts right there so that's going to take us to 97.5 okay and that's 20 minutes in okay then they take a 15 minute bath so it stays at 97.5 quarts right there for that 15 minutes so 20 plus 15 is 35 minutes okay then they pull the drain and it takes 11 minutes to empty the drain okay remember it was at 35 so 35 plus 11 is going to take us to 46 right here all right so here's the domain right here and then here's the range from zero all the way up to that right there okay so this graph is continuous there's no jumps or just a single point right there it's connected all the way through it's just your water level going up and down so there's your water level it's continuous okay and then the domain is down here it goes from 0 to 46 so we say that as 0 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 46 your range goes from 0 all the way up to 97.5 except q is in the middle for quartz okay all right so does that make sense you guys let's try another one a local salesman is going door to door trying to sell vacuums for every vacuum he sells he makes 20 bucks he can sell a maximum vacuum of, of 10 10 vacuums a day all right so here's our graph right here he can get uh, he can sell zero uh, vacuums and get zero dollars for one vacuum he gets twenty dollars for two vacuums he gets uh, two times twenty three vacuums is three times twenty which is sixty all the way up to ten vacuums it's ten times twenty or two hundred okay this one is not continuous because they're not connected they're just points so this graph is discrete okay the domain is all whole numbers down here here's our domain it's whole numbers from 0 to 10 our range is whole numbers but they're multiples of 20 so the range is whole numbers that are multiples of 20 all the way up from 0 to 20 let's try another one uh, at the start of a snowstorm it snowed two inches an hour uh, for two hours then slowed to one inch an hour for an additional hour before stopping three hours after the snow uh, stopped it began to melt at one half inch for an hour uh, one half inch for an hour for two hours okay all right so this one's kind of like the bathtub filling up right here so I'll go through this step by step right here okay so it snowed two inches in two um, in two hours so down here is our time in hours this is our domain so in two hours here's two hours right here two times two is four so it snowed four inches in two hours right there then it slowed to one inch an hour for an additional hour so if we go an additional hour it's only going to climb up to one more inch right there so it's going to be a, a less steep one right there okay so now we're up to five inches three hours after it stopped it began so there's our three hours after it stopped so hadn't start melting until three hours so it stayed at five inches right there so it began to melt at one half inch an hour uh, for two hours so we're going to go add two hours so six I'm going to add another little uh, uh, dash right here for eight because we're going to have to go out to eight and uh, it dropped a half an inch for two hours so after two hours it dropped one inch so it went back down to four right there all right so let's uh, tell it this one is continuous right here 
Okay, and then uh, the domain goes all the way from zero to eight, eight hours right here. And the range goes from, uh, and we did S for snow, snowfall. So the range went from zero to five on the snowfall right there. Okay, all right, that's the rest of that, you guys. If you were my class, I would probably assign that for your homework. And hey, if you're not, and if you are, don't forget to like it. And if you haven't yet, subscribe. Take care, you guys.